Welcome to Tailboard Talk, a fourth shift fit cast. The mission of Tailboard Talk and the fourth shift fitness is to educate and train fire service personnel to increase durability and decrease the potential for injuries and their associated costs. My name is Chris Morella, owner and founder of Fourth Shift Fitness. I'll use my experience as a personal trainer, strength coach, and 15-year veteran of the fire service to deliver tips, tricks, lessons, and information specifically geared towards the health and wellness of firefighters and paramedics. Each episode, you'll leave with immediate deliverables that will improve performance and resilience and keep you in the fight through your career and into retirement. Let's get into it. Everybody, welcome back to Tailboard Talk. This is Chris from Four Shift Fitness and a solo episode today. Back to uh, kind of the old days of the solo runs here. Kurt's on vacation, and that's just kind of the way our schedules work, right? Is you don't have Christmas on Christmas, and you don't have Easter on Easter, Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving, and sometimes you got to record solo because schedules are happening. But lots of value in today's episode. I'm actually going to give you guys two workouts you can do on shift. That's been kind of the theme lately is on shift workouts and um, slow, steady progress and getting some kind of thing going and making ourselves all better. So that's what I'm giving you. Before we get going, huge thank you to those who have gone to the website and donated some coffee money. Um, Slade, Angie, Haley, and there was one anonymous donor in the shadows lurking, giving us coffee money. Thank you so much. We put that button up because it's just a way for people to support the show, kind of tell us um, they like what we're doing. And so if you guys actually go on there and, and uh, support a little bit, man, it means a lot. So thank you. If you're interested in that or you like what's going on with the show, head to the 4th Shift Fitness website, just 4thshiftfitness.com. And on the episodes page of the website, you'll see a buy me a coffee button and you can donate to the show. Anywho's, anywho's, today we're talking about workouts. And I tell you what, one of the greatest things, one of the most fun things that you can do at work is workout and where you can do it is on the bay floor. Now, this is my personal opinion, obviously. I think it uh, comes a lot from the way our stations are set up where I work. Uh, we have seven stations and four of them, yeah, four of them, I think have workout rooms with no windows, three of them four of them have workout rooms with no windows. And so you feel like you're just in a cave. They were, they were remodeled. They were expanded. They're kind of utility rooms or closets that were combined to build workout rooms. But you know, you're in a windowless room working out. So what I really like doing is taking the workout out to the bay floor. I have a few benefits written down here. First of all, there's almost no lag in your response time from the workout. So like I said, one of our workout rooms that at uh, my stations in the basement. Other ones are kind of upstairs and in the corner. Some are just across the bay floor on the other side, but you're in a windowless room. If you're working on the bay floor, you're right there. So alarm goes off. You can change if you want to. Otherwise, just get in and go. The other cool thing is that obviously there's more space on the bay floor compared to the typical workout room, which means you can have more people come out and work out with you. Um, it also looks good if you have the doors open and the community sees you being active during the day and working out. That's an obvious uh, a positive thing. So a lot of people say like, well, yeah, but I like to barbell back squat or I like to do this or I like to run and I can't, you know, on the treadmill or I don't know anybody that says I like to run on the treadmill. But anyways, I can't bring the equipment out to the bay floor. Well, I agree, right? You're limited to what you can bring out from the workout room to the bay floor. However, however, it does have some benefits because now you can do stuff like farmer's carries or object carries, or you can kind of do laps around the station, or you can do longer runs in the back parking lot or whatever you got. So yeah, I, I agree. You're a little bit equipment limited in what you can use on the bay floor, but um, space-wise, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So we're just going to kind of get right to it. And I want you to remember while we're talking about these workouts, kind of what the purpose of on-shift workouts are, or I think what the purpose of on-shift workouts are. So we're going to go back to that analogy that was, I don't know how many episodes ago, but if you envision yourself forcing a door, right? And so we have all those steps of it, of shocking it and gapping it and forcing it and all that stuff. If we envision that evolution, right, we're going to spread that out now over the course of your career. So over the course of your career, you're going to force one big door. And that one big door is your fitness. And most of the work, if we're being honest with ourselves, most of the work of forcing that door happens off shift. And that's kind of the reason, you know, the four shift name is about the time that you invest off shift, the four shift to getting better on it and more durable and then more capable away from it. So most of the work of actually spreading the door and forcing the door happens off shift. Now on shift, when you come into work, 
what I like to envision is just that wooden wedge. So not a steel rescue wedge that you're going to drive forward, but just an old school wooden wedge. And you just jam that thing in the door and it just saves your progress. So I'm not expecting you to make great leaps and bounds while you're on shift or break or, you know, attempt any PRs or, uh, you know, whatever. But I expect these workouts to be like, hey, I'm doing something so I don't backtrack or I don't backslide. I'm saving my progress. And then tomorrow when I get off shift, I'm going to find some way to uh, kind of move the ball forward. That's a common saying where I work, move the ball forward. I'm going to find a way to get better, right? But these workouts are just that wooden wedges, jamming it right to save your progress. And so tomorrow when you're off work, it's time to drive that door open more. Okay, so let's get into it. Two workouts. Now, the first one is going to be just a running clock workout. And Kurt and I talked about this in one of the workout builder episodes. This is not an AMRAP. Okay, this is just a running clock. And this is a fantastic way for people who aren't in a program or are new to working out or are trying to get back into it. This is a great way to structure your workouts because all it is is a set amount of time. And for this one, it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes. So all you're going to do is start, do your warm up and stretches and whatever, um, and then start the clock. And then you just work through the set of things you know, as many times as you feel necessary in that 15 or 20 minutes. So if you're really feeling good for the day, you can dig in and go nuts. Um, if you're feeling like I just want to do something and I'm getting back in it, you can slow down and take your time with you with each thing. If someone's new to working out it's less intimidating because no expectation, the only expectation is that you do something, you know, for 15 to 20 minutes, which may sound underwhelming, but that's the point that some people are at. So let's work with them. All right. So here we are three movements. Okay. For this workout, you're going to use one dumbbell, one step of some sort. So we used a bench or a big giant tractor tire out back of the station, and then the bay floor. So here it is. Run the clock for 15 and 20 minutes. You're going to do 10 to 15 push-ups. You can elevate your hands if you want. You're going to do six to eight step-ups off each leg. You can go straight through on one side and straight on the other side or alternate if you want. And then you're going to pick up that dumbbell and pick a distance across and back on the bay floor or a lap of the bay floor with one hand and then a lap of the bay floor or a distance across and back of the bay floor with the other hand. And that's it. And then you come back to the start, you do your push-ups, you do your step-ups, you do your carries, and you just repeat that cycle as many times as you feel willing or able to do in 15 or 20 minutes. So lots of variation in this one, right? If you get to the push-ups and you're like, ah, my shoulder's bugging me or I just don't like push-ups or whatever, just do 10. If push-ups are your thing, nail 15. Uh, Step-ups, you know, you can hold the weight on this. I would just go empty and move relatively quickly, uh, but you're stepping up onto a tire or bench. And the carry, try to keep tall posture. Grab onto that thing, a full grip. Don't let it hang, um, you know, tilt forward most likely and hang on with your pinkies. You know, take a full grip of that thing, command good posture, up and walk, and then repeat it with the other side. And the first couple rounds might feel kind of lackluster because you're just getting going. But that's when you can pick up the pace, up the reps, up the speed a little bit, and extend the time to that 20-minute mark to get the workout that you feel. Or the opposite, obviously, lower everything and bring it back down, uh, depending on what your goals are for that day. So that's one That's one workout, okay? Minimal equipment, one dumbbell, one step, and the bay floor. Great workout to do outside. Um, inside, you can get a bunch of people because most stations have several dumbbells. So you can have you know your entire crew doing this workout without running any running into each other or needing to share equipment. All right. So number two is sounds a little more aggressive. It's, it really doesn't have to be though, because again, we have a lot of variation in the way that you can do this workout. So the first one or the way it's set up is going to be a every minute on the minute. And if you're a catchy CrossFitter, that's an EMOM, right? And this one's going to start at 10 minutes. Now that's going to be another scalable option that we can, we can kind of tinker with, but we're going to start at just a baseline at 10 minutes. And there's two work, there's two movements in this because the way it works is at the top of the minute, you do these movements and then the quicker you do them, the more time you have to rest because the remainder of that minute is your rest segment. At the top of the next minute, you go back and do these work, these movements again. So just two movements in this one. We're going to start with reverse lunges in place and you're going to get five on each and then overhead press for five. And that's it. Okay. So the variations in this one, single dumbbell double dumbbell, sandbag. We can use the weights for the reverse lunge in place. If you're using a single dumbbell, you can have it in your opposite hand most likely. So if your left foot is forward, the weight will be in your right hand. Or you can do double dumbbell and just keep alternating back and forth with your lunges. 
for the overhead press, you can do a single dumbbell double hand overhead press where basically you hold it horizontal and put a hand on each end of the dumbbell and press it overhead so your arms are more like in a neutral position. You can do a single arm, single dumbbell overhead press. It's going to take a little bit longer. You only have so much time to rest. You can do double dumbbell overhead press. So again, there's a lot of variation in this. Now, if you get to eight, nine, 10 minutes and you're still not feeling it, maybe you should have gone a little bit heavier. Maybe that's appropriate for the day. That's fine. But we also have variations in the rest of the workout. If you're feeling good, you can always add on time. Anything over 10 minutes is going to get kind of repetitive. And uh, that's a long time to be doing just two movements. It's also going to stack on the volume. So with our reverse lunges in place, by the end of 10 minutes, you'll have done 50 lunges on each leg. And that can be a decent amount of lunges. So you also have done 50 overhead presses, either per arm or individuals. That's a lot of overhead presses. So maybe it's time to switch it up. But extending the time is always an option. The other option is add a second add a second every minute on the minute complex on top of it that can be shorter or up to 10 minutes. And for those, I would pick different movements. So I would pick for that one something like squats and push-ups. And with those two, again, ton of variation, right? Are you using the same dumbbells for your squats? You can do a goblet squat, um, a double dumbbell front rack squat. For the push-ups, you can have hands elevated, feet elevated, whatever you want. So Again, guys, it's all about what you want to do for the day. I've kind of told you already how I view the on-shift workouts of being that wedge and just kind of saving your progress. So both of these workouts are great for that. They can be very difficult if you use heavier weights and scale up the intensity, or they can be very conservative and just a really good um, movement session for the day. And uh, above all, though, they can be done on the bay floor. It takes away a lot of hurdles takes away a lot of intimidation and gets more people involved, involved, which I really, really like. And that's it. Those are the two workouts. So I wanted to keep this one fast and short because there's no use in kind of drawing out this subject. What we really got to do is just take these tools and, and get moving. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Love to hear from you. Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you like what we're talking about and you want to support the show, head to the website, fourthshiftfitness.com and hit the buy me a coffee button on the episodes page. And I uh, feel pretty good about this short episode. I know I blew through this, risk, this list pretty quickly, but I think we got it all in there. Uh, if you want individualized training, if you want to get involved in that, let me know or let Kurt know. Just kind of shoot us a message. Um, I'm offering remote digital training, and I'm sure Kurt can be convinced too. So reach out if you need anything. Talk to you guys soon, and be a four shifter.